What is up, everybody? Boys, girls, big and small, old and young. I tried to rhyme that, but it didn't work out. Uh, how are we doing? Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, well, I am back. David, your Unity aficionado, quote-unquote, uh, here with the DAE once again. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, and now I'm, I'm back in business, working uh, remotely, as I do. Um, sorry if the lighting is a bit weird. I know you guys don't usually notice it. I'm all the way in the corner. Uh, I tried to give myself a halo for some reason, I guess. I don't know. Think of that when you will. Uh, but yeah, we're back at uh, Unity Development. Today we're going to work on the same typing runner that we've been uh, working on for the past couple of weeks. And it's kind of exciting now because we're going to start to add sound and maybe some music. Um, we're going to probably focus more on sound than the, the music, just because the music, once you know how to play a sound, you can play a music on loop in the background. I can show you guys how to do that, uh, but I'm probably going, going to focus more on the sounds uh, and the feedback, and that should be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So back to the Unity grind, as we do, um, and I noticed that before I want to get into the sound, uh, I remember seeing something for the, the previous few weeks that I wanted to get at, but never found the, I don't know, the, not the time, but just the, I, I honestly, I forgot about it, forgot a lot about it most of the time. I didn't notice it until somebody uh, pointed it out to me, which was, was nice of them because then I realized, oh yeah, I did want to fix that. Um, so it was the movement of the player. So there wasn't anything wrong with it per se, but it just didn't have the same feel as what I wanted it to. Right now, it looks like it's a bit jittery, uh, and I probably should add this to our movement video, which I'll probably ask if we can do that. But as of right now, he stops on a dime, and you know he's he's probably moving relatively quickly actually for his own world. He's jumping pretty high, uh, and he's strawberry flavored, so you know I don't think he's complaining too much. Uh, and he can stop on a dime. I wish I could stop on a dime like that. That would be incredible. I'd be the most amazing football player in the history of the sport. Uh, but I don't think that's the feel, that's the, the yeah, I guess the, the feel is the word for it that I'm looking for in this case. So what I probably want to do is to use, I'm going to open up the script here. I'm actually going to use, instead of transform.translate, what I want to do is instead of just moving the sprite, instead of moving the character manually, what I can do is have the sprite move automatically based on a speed or a velocity so instead of moving it myself I can have it I can just say hey I want you to move at this speed move at your own leisure but go at this pace uh, which actually is the exact opposite so move at this pace and do as I say those two statements are in line with each other um, rb2d dot velocity so I'm just gonna set the velocity and I'm going to let the sprites do the work for me. I'm gonna let the physics engine as well do the work for me. And instead of setting it equal to new vector to vector dot left, I'm actually going to get the input of the axis of the horizontal axis. And what this does, I can show you guys what this does in the editor. Uh, but this allows us to get either the left and right keys or the the, the, the A and D keys, and it tells us how much you're pressing the key down. This also works with um, uh, the, the controllers the uh, controllers that you can hook up with Unity. So it tells you, let's say, how far to the left or how far to the right an analog stick is moving, uh, particularly the, um, the left analog stick. So this works with both keyboard and uh, controllers, which is very nice. Um, and I actually want to do this for both of these functions. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna have to edit some of this stuff so I don't I really don't need any of this now, all I really need to do is check if we are pressing either the left or the right arrow um, then move um, horizontal because I don't want the A and D keys to also move them to the left or right because that's gonna get really confusing so I'm going to come and call this function move and scale let's say move and scale and I don't think I need moving left and right anymore. What I'm actually going to do um, is, yes, yeah, so I'm going to say if get key or input that get key 
um, key code dot right in row. Da, 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 da. We are going to move and scale. And I'm gonna get rid of all that and all that, and we're gonna leave the space because that's important. Um, we should probably separate these out into two separate functions, but I don't know, I'm feeling kind of lazy today. So what I want to do here is actually get access raw um, with no smoothing filtering applied. So this is either going to give us a number of negative one, zero, or one. So I actually want to get the horizontal raw axis this time, but again, it's not going to give me like a uh, negative 0.5 or a 0.35, right? Like it's not going to give me percentages of how far to the right or left I'm pressing the key or uh, the, moving the analog stick. It's just going to give me, you're going to the left, you're not moving, or you're going to the right. So in this case, I would want to set my scale. I don't want I don't want to ever set it to zero. So if it does equal zero, I want this to be one. Otherwise, I'm just going to get the axis raw of horizontal. I should probably save that in a variable. But again, feeling a bit uh, expedient today. Hmm. So let's see how that looks. I did add a lot just now. So I should probably test one thing at a time, but I'm so excited to get back into it. I just want just to move. I want to start getting into sounds and stuff, you know? Um, I hope everybody's doing well while we're testing this stuff out. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to have to change some stuff up. So what are we going to have to change? We are going to have to change the maximum speed. So where's that at? Is that in, is that in player movement? I guess it is. Uh, yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to change this to a range between 0 and 1,000, so 1 and 1,000. Isn't that nice that I can just change that right here, right now? Uh, let's go here. Let's go down. Um, and we're going to change the horizontal speed to much higher. Uh, now that we're multiplying it by time that delta time and times the axis, it's no longer huh, interesting. Well, now it's, now it's at least it's much smoother, which oh, oh it feels so nice. Um, um, that's interesting. So the speed is constantly being set to something else. It's not necessarily flipping to the left or to the right. So I'm wondering if maybe get access raw gives us a negative one or a zero. Um, <laughs> oh, do you know what? I think it's because we're setting this is moving is false. Um, okay. We could probably just set is. Mm, yeah, you know what? Instead of this, so we don't need moving right and moving left anymore. Um, in move and scale. Um, well, actually, this is never going to be the case, is it? Because one of these keys is going to be. Rest. Maybe I should do an else if down here and just do the same thing, but for the right arrow. Um, I can just say maybe in here, moving left equals true. Right equals false. And maybe I can just do the same thing, but flip them. And then down here, I can add those that if statement back in here. Say if not right and not left is moving is false. Else is moving equals true. Um. 
Well, I could probably just say, is moving is true in here. Is moving is true. Um, let's see. I, I, I really don't want to have to use moving right, moving left. I just want to check if it's moving. Maybe eventually I'll check moving right, moving left. But for right now, um, I think I'm just going to... I don't need any of this, really, because it's, ne it's never going to be zero, because we're only calling this function if we are pressing down on one of the keys. Um, if, well, at what point are we not moving? That's the question. When are we... When are we done moving? When is, is moving set to false? Because I think we have to for the animator. Let's double check that. Uh, oh no, actually is. Oh yeah, is moving. Okay, yeah. So eventually we have to set is moving to false. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, do we ever want him to stop running? I don't know if we did this in the last episode or not. But I don't think we want him to look like he's, he's done running. So I'm wondering why when he lands, his scale goes back to one. Very interesting. Because when I press the left arrow, it should set the scale to negative one. One, one. But when he lands, let's see. Um, is falling true. Uh, otherwise, if the velocity is neither, then it's jumping is false, if it's falling is false. So what is an issue? Because we should still, we can play the animation, but setting the scale shouldn't change our, uh, or playing the animation shouldn't change our scale. Pretty sure. Um... <laughs> Maybe I just want to make a uh, transform.local scale is negative one in there. Instead of trying to do all this fancy stuff based on the, the raw axis, let's just try testing this out. Equals one. Is there a vector three dot left? No, there's not. Um, oh, there probably is actually. But that would just be one zero zero, right? Yeah. Um, okay, let's try that, and then equals. Let's just do vector three dot one. Is moving is true, and we'll just change this to move. And we'll get rid of this comment. Don't need any of that in there, and yeah, we'll change this, I probably should have just renamed the method, but there, we're not calling it too many times, it's so not too big a deal, not too big a deal really, let's run this, time to run Weasley, nope, still going to the right, but when I'm in the air, does. Interesting. So when I'm in the air and I press the key, uh, oh, I see, this is what it is. Yeah, so we are, hmm, and let's say, is moving Alright, you know what we'll just say is moving moving left equals true. Right equals false. I know I said I didn't want to do this, and I don't. But uh, we'll compromise for now. 
to find a better way to do this a bit later. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I do want to get to the sounds at some point. Um, okay, so this is, yeah, this is what's setting the local scale. I could just get rid of this entirely. Because why are we really doing this? Um, we could say if we could we could check for the input and just say and instead if input dot get axis horizontal. All right, we've used this far too many times to not make a variable at this point. So. Hmm, we'll make it a variable. Let's just do that. Why not? Um, we'll just make a float. Actually, we're using get axis and get axis. We're just using get axis, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I said we use it too many times. We've only used it one time. Uh, so maybe it's not worth it. Okay, get axis horizontal equals zero then we will set it to one but otherwise we'll set it based on yeah okay so then we don't need these hallelujah i'm not a praying man but unity makes me one ah ha wow where did we go there Oh, we can now, we can now triple jump somehow, ouch, interesting, oh, do you know what, I think it might be because we are still, oh, ouch, um, technically maybe we're doing it as our y velocity becomes zero um all right but that movement feels a bit better to me so that's kind of nice um and you know what i'm thinking is maybe i don't want each of these oh i don't do that do i um oh this has the movements on it right yeah so i don't want to move the colliders actually i keep i think i want to keep the colliders um so I am going to copy this component, remove it. Actually, not. No, wait. Oh uh, gosh. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Um. Oh dear God. Yeah, fine. I'll open the prefab. Open. We are going to take these guys out of here. I'm doing this so that I can. Oh please, for the love of God. Please. Please. Um. Can I just, can I, um, please? Could, could I, would you mind if I, oh my gosh. All right, is there, um, all I want to do is unparent this from here. Is that not possible? That must be possible. Okay, open the prefab, please. Can I just, <laughs> can I take this out? Can I take this out? No, of course not. How would I be able to do that? Um, I'm pretty. I'm. I'm pretty shocked right now. Not gonna lie. No, 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 no. That's not. That's not what I want at all. All I would like cannot be deleted. Components cannot be reordered. Huh. So. How do we, um, miser, bollocks, cool, so, no, oh, that's the, that's the problem, that's not what I want, actually, um, what I want is simply to unparent this from this object here and I thought it would be easier than it actually is but it is a shame that it is not um, let's paste the component as new over here 
then where is this so the x size the offset okay so that's here oh okay so it's in the same place then oh that's lovely lovely oh we love that yep we do love that cool so we can also just remove this then and we can just keep the floor because the floor is not moving um but the sprites are okay lovely cool mm, radio whoa whoa a little input lag here hang on a second uh, all right so I have saved this now what I'd also like to do is I found this uh, sound FX retro pack by Levi Moore zero rare it's got five stars on here it's got uh, plenty of content in here which is the nice thing about the graciousness of those who have time to make these wonderful assets for us to use in these example projects um, they have a lot of hit sounds they have a lot of jump sounds lasers power-ups game overs Right, things that we can, might be able to use for if we have coins later on. Uh, coins are very helpful, I'm sure, in many games. So we're downloading it, and then we're going to have to import it in just a second. And we're going to import, probably just going to import the ones that we need. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see that menu. Yes, we will. Wonderful. So we'll keep the coin one. Uh, I don't think we'll need the explosions for right now. We can always download that later, or import it later, rather. I don't know if we'll need the game over. I think we'll need a hit, we'll need a jump. Um, what can we use for the laser? Um, maybe the typing in the letters. Maybe we could also use the power-ups. And I don't think we need the demo. Uh, although there is, I'm sure, a lot of really awesome content in here, uh, which we can take a look at a bit later. It's probably got all of this stuff in here. Um, and it uses all of these sounds to show uh, to showcase all the audio. So let's just import all that we've selected so we can shorten the process a bit. You know me, all about speed. That was a joke, guys. Oh, boy, it has been a while. Um, let me know in the comments or in the chat how you guys have been. Uh, like I say, it's been a while. And... Yeah, kind of lost my train of thought there. I was about to say something, and then I got distracted because I saw Laser 13 or something. For some reason, that just, like, that triggered um, a game that I, I worked on before called Outpost Delta. And one of the sounds in there was called Laser 13. So go figure, you know. Just wandering through the recesses at the corners of my mind. Just your everyday Monday. Uh, cool. So we have all our sounds. Let's see where those that would be in zero rare. And you know what? Let's make a sounds folder. We haven't done that yet. We can call it audio. I'm going to call it sounds. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take the sounds that we probably want. Oh dear. Excuse me. So let's listen to some of the hits. Uh, wonder if we can just play it really quick. Could we just, oh boy, we have to listen to each one of these through groove music. If this is very loud, I apologize. I haven't tested this out before. So if it does get very loud, um, well, I guess we'll see. Oh, uh, maybe I can bring that down just a bit. Oh, okay, so that's 8 bit kind of sound. Um, we can go through all of these, but I think maybe that's, yeah, that's okay. That's a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, that's that's also nice. That's a long one. Yep. Yeah. That's a fart. Um, that's a bongo drum. Let's see. That's like this is getting eight bit. You can see how it's choppy over here, and it's this is the <laughs> the core of, of sound design really, um, or how you can use it to your advantage anyway. Um, I don't know. I kind of like this one. This one, or maybe that one. These are some classic NES kind of feedback sounds that you get that's all another fart yeah that's the one that you hide from your in-laws um, 
that one seems to have uh, too short of uh, a length there. Let's see, what else do we have? It's uh, like a high-pitched one. I don't know, we can just play around with all these. Like a, a bassy, and that's a really grungy kind of hit. I think I'm going to go with 11. I think I really like this one. Yeah, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it into my sounds folder, and I'll see if I want anything else. So for the jump, whoa, hello. Whoop! Yeah, what kind of, I guess what kind of sound are we going for? These are kind of like space, outer space, retro, kind of like jumping on the moon kind of sounds. Where it's very, oh that's okay, yeah. That's, that's a decent one. That's a really loud fart, okay. And, let's see. Yeah, like, like a, I think we need a short one because of the, the speed of our jump. Boop! Oh, that's too short, I think. And that's really short, and this one is just like, boop, like a little bubble pop. Oh, cool. Mm. So again, these are free sounds. These are retro sounds. If you think that you want to find other sounds, there's plenty of free uh, sound packages out there on the Asset Store. Feel free to browse. Feel free to look through and download some if you think that there's a package that entices you or that you think would fit the theme of your game. By all means, don't hesitate. Download it. Try it out. If it's not for you, that's fine. You can go find other ones. It just You just gotta, gotta take the time listen to some of this uh, honestly uh, pretty well made I would say uh, sounds I don't know if maybe they used uh, some kind of a program to um, uh, to get these these outputs because they all sound very similar but with different um, filters and, and different speeds frequencies and amplitudes on them let's see what do we have here You guys, actually, I'm realizing now you might not be able to hear it because of the music in the background. So let me see if I can pause this just for a second. Just so we can... Let's see here. And you're going to hear me click a lot. Um... That's a loud one. I don't know if we want these to be too loud. Maybe let's do this one. Let's take... That's a bit long. These are the longer ones, right? Yeah, these are the longer ones. Okay. Um, that's kind of cool. These are cool. Yeah, I think 27. Let's do 27. All right, I'm gonna put the music back on. Um, but, okay, cool. So let's say maybe be a sound for when we we can find one for when we type a letter maybe uh, these are all 8-bit sounds as you guys can tell you can definitely hear the 8-bit uh, culture in here hmm. I'm just browsing around in here Nothing crazy. Um, I probably want maybe um, maybe not a laser. Maybe like hmm. I think these are super cool. Um. Say maybe if we type a letter out or if we get a word right, we can also uh, add this sound. Um, man, I don't want to spend too much time, but I'm such a nitpicky kind of guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. These are all like kind of 8 bitty, which is exactly what we downloaded. That's not bad. You know what, Power Up 3 honestly isn't too bad. I just don't want too, like, too many high frequencies. Um, that sounds more like a jump, honestly. Yeah, man, I can spend all day doing this, but I should not. I don't want to waste you guys' time. So let's just do Power Up 11, 
for right now. And let's say we'll pick another uh, jump for when we type in a letter correctly. Maybe a coin sound, perhaps. Uh, I don't know about that one. That's, that's not bad, actually. Let's do coin 30. So I'm going to rename this one to uh, better correct. What was this one? This was hit player hit. Uh, this was the actual jump, and that was getting or correct player jump and word correct right I think so uh, I hope I didn't get those mixed up but we can always listen to it yes that was definitely not jump okay so how does sound even work in unity for those of you who are not familiar I can show you the way uh, so what we can do is add in audio source to our player, or we can add it to another game object, maybe an audio manager. <laughs> um, some developers just don't like using the manager uh, organization format, which I guess it's becoming less and less popular nowadays. Um, or not nowadays, it's been less popular for quite some time now. Um, but what we can do is we can have our audio source, we can put in some music clip in here, we can have it play on loop and play on awake. Um, and then what we can do is we can add in some script. So let's make an audio manager script. Mm. Create, you know what? I can just add a component. I can say audio manager. Um, and I think I'm just going to make a basic singleton, just going to make a single audio manager instance. Uh, what the heck is a singleton? A singleton is just a way to ensure that there's only one instance of an object uh, in your game, and that object is available to any and all scripts. So I want to take this bring it into scripts. Um, so what we can do is, can we open that up, please? That would be mighty helpful. Thank you. Okay. So I don't think we need either of these right now. Anyway, uh, I think we'll need engine dots audio probably maybe I don't know. We'll see. And then we'll need a public static. Audio manager. Um, audio manager. We'll say in void awake. For those of you who feel that you are above these comments, these lowly comments that mono behavior provide us when we first start off, we can get rid of those. Uh, we can say audio manager equals. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, equals this. If audio manager is null, audio manager equals this. Else. This game object. So if it's null, um, and we'll probably also want to add a No. 
We're not going to do the else for right now. We're going to make this as basic singleton as possible. So what we're saying is at the very beginning, if the audio manager has not been set already, set it to this, this component. Um, right, so now we are going to make a few static uh, functions. Static. Void, play, hit. Uh, we will add in a few realize fields. Got to be attribute. Um, we'll say private audio clip player hits. Um, and I'm forgetting if doing this allows you to make multiple uh, private variables serialized. If you add the comment here, but I, you know, I'll, I'll try it. I'll see. Player hit and what else is there? Player jump. Let's say. Let's just try these two for the time being. Let's see if it serializes both of them. Or if it just serializes the first. Oh, it does. Lovely. Oh, isn't that just lovely? Isn't she lovely? Uh, where was it? So we had uh, letter correct, word correct, player jump, player hit. Word correct. Um. So we are going to play hit, and then we'll say uh, we're going to need an audio source as well. So we'll need serialized field, as you do, audio source, source, and we're not going to initialize it to anything in awake. Uh, we also don't need start, I don't think, um, say source dots. Whoa, okay there, partner. Source. Oh, do you know why? Because it's not static. Uh, fine. Well, I hit source dot. Um, play one shot. We pass in an audio clip. We're going to say player hit. Another one, play jump, source.play one shot, player jump -a. don't know why I added the E at the end, um, and I don't think I ever will play, oh wait, that's got to be capital, whoa, make that capital, always a good habit to get into. Letter and we'll say source dot play one shot and play one shot allows us to play multiple audio clips at the same time as opposed to using the play function the play method. Source dot play one shots were correct. Okay. Now, there's definitely a better way to do this. I'm just doing it because we only have four sounds as of right now. So now we have to think at what point are we going to call these methods? When are we going to get play hit? When are we going to play jump? When are we going to play correct letter and correct word? Well, we know exactly where all those things happen. We just have to find them. So let's go to player movement. And I think in here we're also checking for the collision. We are. Wonderful. Maybe we can also get a land sound at some point, right? Let me fall and we land. And when you land, maybe we can have some particle effect that shoots dust up, you know, just little eye candy you can add to a game that makes it all the more uh, impactful, uh, makes each movement, each uh, impact more impactful. Boy, losing my words today. I'm always telling my students to learn a new vocabulary word, and I should take my own advice here. So in here we're taking damage, and I think maybe in player stats, whenever we call the take damage function, um, we should always play, if the amount is greater than zero, of course we're going to take damage, 
and we're going to do all this. So we're going to say audio not source audio manager dot audio manager dot play hit. Do 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 do. So that's going to play the hit from the source that we are going to add. We have to remember to add that in here. Um, we have to remember to add all these clips in. Otherwise, it's not going to know what the heck we are talking. So when we take damage, when we jump, right, so whenever we jump, we're only jumping, well, I guess technically we, we can double jump for some reason. I don't know how that's possible because we're setting double jumps to true. When are we setting double jumps to false? When transform residual is less than the, ah, uh, ha, huh. okay. If we've hit the floor, then if not jumping and not is falling, we can also jump. Um, we probably want to set, when do we set check jump to false? Oh, we do that every time we jump. Um, but then when do we set it to true? Aha. So when we press space, we're checking if we're not jumping and we're not falling. Okay, so when are we setting those to false? Oh man, I'm getting distracted. I get so distracted so easily. This is what happens. Oh, Boise. So we're just doing all this here. That's fine though. Uh, we're checking the velocity. So if it's... Oh, that's probably what it is. So we could probably just check if it's greater than zero or if it's less than zero. Let's try that. Let's try that. We want it to be exactly zero. So I think we were having trouble with that before. I don't know if we're going to have trouble with that anymore. Um, man, so why is that happening? Huh? What is with the input lag here? Ooh. Um, okay. We are not taking damage. Oh, okay, fine. So let's just do less than math f dot epsilon. So <laughs> it's a very, very small number. Uh, and then we can just do negative math f dot epsilon. Up, ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, epi -ba dot epsilon. Um, that's wrong. Is very wrong. That's what we want. This is when we're setting. Okay. All right. Come on, David. Here we go. It is game time. Hmm. And guess what we didn't do? <laughs> guess what we did not do? Any of what I said we were supposed to. Didn't do any of it. Letter correct. That's that one. Would correct. And audio source, which I guess, oh, it's just this one. So, okay, we'll just do source equals get components audio source. See, adding the E at the end there actually makes sense. Maybe in some languages, source A. Okay, and we don't need to serialize that anymore. More. Um, movements. All right. So whenever we jump, this was what it was. Um, I was trying to fix the jump. So now what I actually wanted to do was dot audio manager dot play jump. Okay. Cool. And then there was also letter correct. So maybe. Um, here we are checking for input, so if we press the correct letter, then, mm, okay, yeah, so incomplete word, I think is where we want to call audio manager dot audio manager dot play correct word. Um, Close enough to okay right. Um, 
set next key. So we only want to do this if we are pressing the correct key. So maybe in here, at this point, we're setting the correct letter to that. So we can call dot audio manager dot play. Whoopsie. So that's the one. The correct letter. Um, cool. So let's try this out, guys. Let's see if we get some sound in here. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love it. Oh, we love it. Oh, that is wonderful. Nice. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear God. Okay. Can we get some, some easier ones, please? Can we not get Miracle? It's a miracle that happened. Oh my god, it's only Miracle in development now. Why is that happening? Ah, here we go. An easy one. Please. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh! Whoa. Alright. Fun. That's the one. That's the easy one. That's the one we want. Cool. Oh, Kangaroo. Oh man, I need to work on my typing. Oh dear god. Um, at some point we should probably make a game over screen. Or a you win. You know, if you want to do this. Uh, and really complete the project. Um, cool. So we can also add in some music. Um, adding in music is just as simple as finding uh, some clip or some, uh, some track on the asset store that is free. You can look for music for sure. I'm sure there's plenty of, of packages out there that include uh, musical tracks. There actually were a couple that I saw. Sound, oh music, that's the one. So we can actually look for music instead of sound effects. And oh, background music, cool. We have music puzzle game, we have absolutely free music. Boy, that sounds real enticing. Free music tracks, right? We have so many different cyberpunk. Ooh. I think Rob would be a big fan of this one. Uh, if you guys don't know Rob, he is uh, the boss man. He's the, uh, the president, the CEO of the DAE. Uh, he's also cranking out some content on the YouTube channel, so you should go, you should go check him out. He's a fun guy. Um, radio. Okay, cool. So, like I said, I'm not going to add music because we have the background music. I'm pretty partial to acoustic music. But if you guys want, uh, you can take the clip and just add it right in here. Click this loop button and be on your way. And it'll loop it for you. It'll play the whole track. Um, usually when they give you these these background musics in here, they make them so that they're easily loopable. Is that a word? Loopable? They're able to be looped. Loopinated. Um... So they, they try to help you out in that regard. Okay, cool, so we have some sounds. Let's say we add a couple more and be on our merry way. So let's see, what else do we have in here? We have jump, we have get the word right. Uh, we have land maybe, maybe we want to land. Maybe we want, we want a different kind of, of hit sound, let's say. Um, oh dear God, right, we have to open it up, don't we? Um, so I don't want it to be like a, I want it to be like a crash or something. Maybe, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, like a, like dirt kicking up. Uh, so that one's all right. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do this one. This one can be our land. Uh, player land. Oh, no, that's not what I want, Ted. Oh, dear God, please have mercy. Stop. I, uh, okay. I'm frazzled. Let us defrazzleize ourselves. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Good golly gosh. So let's add in another audio clip in here. Player land, lovely. And we'll do another public boy pub kick pub safe play player play land. 
Playland. That sounds like a fun place to go. Source.play one shots. Player land. Kind of sounds like the the world in Ready Player One. That was a fun movie. Ready Player One. That was a very interesting kind of macabre take on uh, VR. Well, I wouldn't say macabre. It was it was sci-fi, but it was still kind of kind of dark times for those kids, those people. Um. All right. On that cheery note. Let's take this in here, and it should. We should just be able to play player land whenever we land. So how do we know when we've landed? When we hit the floor. When the tag is floor. Um, and here we're checking double jumps. It's false. Um, or it's a platform. Uh, we want to check if the Y is greater than that Y position. If it is, audio manager. You guessed it. Dot play land. Let's try that out. Mm -hmm. Taking water at the wrong time. Let's see. Jump. Jump and land. Okay. Interesting. So we're not actually playing that sound. Let's see. Is that one? does have right yeah okay so I guess the question is are we actually uh, registering the collision here so the Y is greater than the transform position oh because we write so what we actually have to do is set the tag of our floor here to floor and with the platform, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to keep that there. Uh, platform sprites, I think, yeah, this, this box collider will work just fine. Um, but because we're landing on the floor here, this is the object that now has the collider because we moved it. So we just have to remember that. Uh, so we set this tag to floor. Now I think it should work because we are now colliding with a floor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the one. Nice. Sweet. Stop. Okay, cool. Interesting. So now we're not getting that input lag anymore. I'm not sure what was causing that. Um, let's see here. What else can we add? Um, maybe we can add, like, uh, when an enemy, uh, gets defeated, something like that. Uh, maybe we can add, like, a, a roaring sound, uh, so we can find that online somewhere. Um, we could also add in, like, uh, a coin, just to collect it, just, just to see that it might work. Um... And it, I don't think it would be too difficult to add. I think we have coins in here. I hope we... Oh, we do coin animation. Oh, lovely. Isn't that just so nice when they give us... Oh, and look at that. Look at that animation. Isn't that gorgeous? And I think we already did. Didn't we? I thought we did at some point. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll use the... Are we using the 2x of the 4 times? I'm forgetting. We'll just use the 4 times and we'll reduce it down if we have to. Radio. Um, so that is the coin, so we'll take this animation, we'll make a new coin, and we'll animate it later on, I guess, uh, but for right now I'll just take this one, we'll make a new sprite, mm, make a new, where would it be, uh, I guess we can make it a prefab as well, we can take the coin, Animation, go in here, go in there, take this, um, and I'll just take it and drag it into prefabs. Now it is a coin, it is a sprite. Um, oh, do you know what? Yeah, we probably want to make a new object coin. And we'll make a sprite renderer. Nope, that's not what I wanted. We're going to add a new sprite renderer. That's the one. 
Thank you very much, sir. Or madam. Um, okay. Yeah, now get, get out of here with that. Okay, missing sprite. Oh my goodness gracious. Um. Oh man. I think I messed up. Well, <laughs> that's alright. Good thing we have another one. I can always go back and import it again. Uh, maybe I should copy it this time. There's an idea. Uh, we can add a component. <laughs> and we can just look and drag. That's the one. Okay. So that'll be the coin. And let's set the sorting layer to let's say, mid ground, maybe. Let's change the size a bit. Let's do scale 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Make it a bit smaller, sure. It's pretty high res. It's not too important. And we'll give it a tag of new one. We'll call it collectible. Cool. And then we have to go back in here. We have to add the tag once more. Um, I'm honestly shocked that they haven't added that functionality where if you add a tag on an object that it doesn't just automatically add that tag to the object. It's a very small thing, very small detail, but it, it hasn't happened yet. Ooh. Right, so we can take this coin and we can bring it into our prefabs because maybe we'll want to make it again at some point. Uh, we're going to open the prefab, we're going to add in a box collider 2D and it's going to guesstimate for us, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm just going to maybe... No, you know what? That's fine. That should be fine for now. Uh, we're just going to click in here so that we get rid of this little asterisk next to the name. So that means that it saved all the changes that we made so far. Um, and let's also add a looping movement. And we'll set the speed to 3. I think everything else is also... Three. Um, we'll set start position to this guy. Sure. Oh, I want to lock this, and I'm gonna take this guy. And nope, 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 nope. Um. Oh, that's the floor. Oh, you know what? It was this one. Yeah. Original and reset. Yeah. So we're gonna take this, bring that. In there, we're just gonna make the, the platform the reset X and Y position. Right, okay. Um, cool. So we did that, added the speed, and um, we'll just add a little script to our coin here. We'll call it collectible new script. Call it collectible. We're gonna make this a, a class, different kind of object here. And yes, we're gonna want to um, add a component, apply to the prefab, and add a component, apply to the prefab. It's nice that they let you do that. You don't have to open up the prefab yourself. Uh, okay, so let's open up this collectible, and we'll just say. That this has some kind of a value associated with it. So, realize field, private, int, value. Um, what else do we need? This already has the looping movement. When we collide with it, we want to play. And we're going to add a value to our score. So, I'll say maybe we're going to add five. Sure, why not? Um, when we add to our score, what are we actually adding to our score here? Uh, in player stats, maybe. Why are we doing that? Because maybe when we type it out, if we get it correct, we're going to add to our score. Does that sound right? That does sound right, doesn't it? UI manager, the one script that I didn't click on. Uh, we have score, and we can say, thankfully, we have add to score some number of points, so we don't just have to add one. Cool. Um, and we have a singleton in here too. We do. Um, oh, so we did do that in here as well. All right, so we can just honestly we can just do. <laughs> wow. 
I don't see why not. We just copy this, huh? Which is the same thing, but we can do that in here. So instead of UI manager, manager equals that. Lovely. Oops. Nope, 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 nope. Okie dokie, and we'll do, what else do we want to do? Uh, right, so coin sound, coin, um, we'll find one more coin sound, then we'll add that, so we'll do coin, source dot, play, one shot, you guessed it, coin. Uh, all right, so yeah, the collectible, I guess, really doesn't need any of this stuff. Great. Uh, we'll just make a public int value. Um, get, and we don't want to set it. We're just going to return, to turn, return value. Lovely. Um... And this will just allow us to, to access this value. Um, so let's see, did we set the coins? We did not do that in the prefab. Let's open it up, let's go into our value, let's set this to six and then five. Uh, I don't know if that does save it for every instance, but for the time being, it happens to have saved it for this instance, which is very nice. Um, okay, so now when the player collides with that coin, Else, if not in object, I'll say well, that game object uh, compare tag collectible. Um, I should also probably make that an enum at some point. All these different tags, instead of relying on strings, I can just rely on an enum, which would have all of these saved. Um, it's just easier to keep track of and so that you don't do any misspellings. So if it's a collectible, what do we want to do? Um, if call dot, dot components. No, hang on. Collectible is going to have some value of some sort. So if it's a collectible, what do we want to do? We want to UI manager dot dot um, dot add my manager dot add to score and then we'll say call dot game object dot get components whoa whoa they're Nelly hang on a second get component collectible right get the collectible dot value now there's a mouthful Say that with a mouthful of checks mix. Uh, so we're going to be adding this value to our score, and then we are going to call uh, destroy all dot game object. All right. So once we collect the coin, we're going to destroy it. Uh, it will be moving, but not for long. So we also want to play the sound. So we'll say audio manager dot manager dot play coin it just knows exactly what we want isn't that nice I think maybe because that was the first one was in alphabetical order uh, right so we have do we have our coin sound yet I don't think we do so we have to go find that as well oh we have this unlocked as well. uh, so let's go find a coin sound real quick let's find a nice I don't know about that one. Oh, I don't know about that either can we minimize that please thank you not sure. Eh. Meh. Meh. Hmm. No. Oh. Nope. I'm just, you know, I don't know. I'm just a simple guy. I just want a nice, satisfying coin sound. These are kind of like things and sounds that you hear in doctor shows. I mean, 
that's not bad. That one's not bad. Like a doo doo. Like a low and then a high kind of sound instead of just a single pitch. Um, so I think four is our best bet here. And if we want, we could take this into some basic sound processing program and mess with it a little bit, you know, change maybe the tone, the, uh, the, the speed, the, 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 what's the word? It's not the pace. Oh, man. Oh, well, I'll think of it at 3.30 this morning. I'll wake up and I'll be like, that's it, and get no sleep that night. But that happens to all of us, doesn't it? You know, I'm actually going to do the smart thing, and I'm going to copy it and paste it here. <laughs> Instead of, uh, or I could just not do that at all, and uh, have to go back and find it again. Um, I swear, I thought you could copy objects, but I guess not. I guess you can't. You can definitely duplicate it, but where did it go? <laughs> so, all right, I think maybe. It, Nope. No, no, I, I was wrong. So, I thought that it would duplicate the sound. Um, <laughs> yes, I was wrong. No problem. So, I'm just going to take this and bring it into my sounds folder. Cool. And I'm just going to call this. Oh my god, I did the same thing. No, 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 no. I don't want to rename the bloody folder. I just want to rename this. So I just like keeping things organized in this way, where I know where all my sounds are, I can just go to Audio Manager. Um, okay, let's try it out, all right? We added the collision, we player playing the, the coin sound. Um, let's try it out, let's see. Let's see if it actually works. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, we have to make this a trigger, first of all. Second of all, why is... Oh, should it be foreground then? Oh, oh, oh uh, yeah, it's the Z thing, isn't it? Oh man, it's gonna drive me up a wall. Up a bloody wall. Okay, so that's fine. Then. We can save that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And we're going a bit over, I know, I just want to show you guys that this is in fact working. Oh! <laughs> cool! Um, oh, you know what, we have to add on trigger, enter, yeah, so not on collision 2D. On trigger, enter 2D, and collider 2D, COL, and we'll just do here, all of that. We'll do this in here, right, on collision, so if the collider that we have collided with is a trigger, and it is collectible, then do all this stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I forgot. I forgot. Okay, here we go. That's the one. That's what we like to see. Cool. So we added to our score. We saw five up there. I stopped it before we could see it, but if you guys want to go back and take a look. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how we are able to pretty easily add sounds to our game just like that for free and we did that in about an hour we did it yeah i'd, I'd say in about an hour because we, we spent most of the, like the first quarter of this just like talking messing around with the, the player movement and the jumps and going back and forth between scripts um so this is a, a i think going a bit over uh the time limit here uh so hopefully they'll keep all this in but if not maybe they'll just keep the important bits in uh but yeah, guys, uh, great seeing you again. Hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, little chat and gab and create and hang, all that. Uh, I think, like I said, we'll be spending another couple of episodes uh, on this kind of game to, to talk about um, doing little final touches uh, with the, the, the menus and with, let's say, different polish uh, tricks, and then with exporting and building, seeing if it actually works uh, on a computer after you build it. Um, so those are, I guess, the next things that I want to cover, and then we'll move on to a new project, and we'll see what we create in the next one. But for right now, uh, if you've enjoyed these videos and you're feeling generous, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Uh, feel free to hit the bell as well so you get notifications to let you know when we uh, upload and when we give you guys new content. 
because uh, we are cranking out a few. I think we're doing less over the summer, but we'll be picking it back up, I believe, during the year. Um, and that's pretty much it for me, as usual. So here I am, trailing off and getting lost in my own thoughts, as you do. Uh, but yeah, I hope to see you guys very soon. Uh, otherwise, have a good rest of your week, or two weeks. I think it'll be a couple of weeks. And I will see you guys very soon.